For CMUEagles.com, I'm Brett Neese here alongside head men's basketball coach Jeff Sherman. Coach, I'm sure last Saturday's loss to Mid-American Nazarene hurt, but what can you take from that game moving forward here as we're closing out the season and heading into the conference tournament? Well, it hurt. Uh, Two-point loss. Um, one um, very good thing that came out of it, uh, it's a special time for our program, was Mitch Farr. Not only did he have 33 points, I believe, but he also became a member of our 1,000-point club. So uh, there was a little bit of um, good that we were able to take from that, uh, that contest. Uh, bottom line, uh, it, a loss is always tough. But this is the most enjoyable time of the year to play ball. So uh, you know, we're heading into this week. Uh, our conference is probably facing a situation that we haven't had uh, I know in my tenure since I've been here at Central, uh, we've never had eight teams pretty much um, just separate themselves from just a game or two. So uh, these two games that we have coming up um, this week are going to be crucial. Uh, teams uh, want to get on a little bit of momentum uh, heading into playoffs. And, you know, our guys, our guys feel good. I think we're getting the most out of our players. Our, our situations have been tough with uh, losing players. Uh, we might get a player back maybe towards the end of this week, which can uh, help in a little bit of uh, uh, situations, not just uh, the matchups, but uh, overall morale, you know, on the team. But um, uh, it's the most enjoyable time to play. Um, I think any time you can play in, in March, uh, you know you've kind of separated yourself. And our goals are still intact. We, we intend to be uh, the hottest team, uh, the best team come postseason play. And that's what we're shooting for this week. Looking at Graceland, it's a favorable matchup for you guys back on January 22nd. Here at home, you beat the Yellow Jackets 77-51. Should this game get your team back to its winning ways and hopefully allow you to pick up some momentum here with these two games left on the schedule? Well, you, you would hope. Uh, the, the tough part about Graceland is they do have one of the toughest uh, home court uh, advantages in the conference. One, it's, uh, you know, at this time anyway, it's the only school in Iowa. We, you know, we add a couple next year. But it's, so it's, it's a longer trip. Um, they, they draw well for their home games. Um, but um, Graceland sits at the bottom of the conference right now. Uh, we did play well here. Uh, they have not played well on the road this year. Uh, all their wins come at home. So that being what it is, uh, they're in the same spot as we are. I mean, they have an opportunity to play next week in the playoffs. Uh, you throw your records out uh, the window, and you start over. If I was Graceland, I'd say let's get on a roll this week and we go into to next week. Uh, everyone's zero and zero and you start a whole new season. So uh, I, at times, uh, am more worried about playing these games than I am playing a, an Evangel or a Benedictine that's nationally ranked because your players are already pumped up. You, you're wanting to play those teams. Uh, these are the type of teams uh, right now that could sneak up and kind of spoil your momentum. And uh, getting back on the winning track, uh, you know, again, we dropping two games uh, in a row, we really haven't felt like we've been on the losing track. We were in both those games and had chances to win both. And uh, bottom line is if we would have won both games last week, we would be having a chance this week at an automatic bid to the national tournament. That's just what two games does. And now we're fighting for our life to see where we're going to get, you know, as far as positioning the playoffs. So uh, we know uh, how crucial this one game with Graceland is. Uh, we haven't really even talked about Saturday's game as much. So, you know, we have to go focus on Graceland. You mentioned, you mentioned Mitchell Farr. He dropped 33 on the Pioneers last week, and he did pass that 1,000-point mark. But he did that, unfortunately, with three of your starters out hurt. And you, you did mention he might get one back. How important will it be to get – a couple of those guys, and who, who might be coming back this week? Well, uh, Mitch Wendling, who's missed the last, oh, I think three games, three to four games maybe. Um, his injury was the less serious. He, he didn't have surgery like the, like the other two uh, have. I don't think we're going to get uh, John Palmer or Eric McDaniel back this year. We, we knew pretty much going into that, that they were out for the year. Uh, with Mitch being our tallest player, for the last couple of weeks, we've had all our players play different roles. Uh, we've asked them to uh, reshift their, their thought process a little bit on what their uh, comfort zone is, and we've asked them to kind of play another position. 
and that's tough. Uh, and, and for Mitch, it's it's tough just as well because the players around him are all doing different things than what they normally do. So the tough part for us the last couple of weeks is that we just have we've been a little different team. Uh, from a coaching standpoint, we've been proud uh, of how they've adjusted, how they've reacted, and how they've competed. Uh, our league's good, and uh, you know, again, a couple possessions here and there have separated the outcome of us coming out on top. But getting Mitch back allows everyone to go back to their normal positions. And I think uh, if we play our normal positions and if we have the, that extra depth, we're as good, if not better, than any team in the conference. And so obviously from a confidence standpoint, that's going to that's gonna greatly enhance our chances. Getting him back, does that mean you won't have to play small as much as you have the past couple of games? Well, we had no option. I think 6'4 was the as big as we, we went with Mitch out. But even with Mitch in, 6'6 six, six is as big as we go. Uh, I, you know, For those that have known our system in the past, some of our finest teams that we've had have been small. Uh, when we go small, everyone on our team really becomes a scorer. And uh, when we're on, we're one of the better three-point shooting teams in the country. Fortunately, the first half, I believe, um, was it one of those games we only shot 28%, and we, and we managed to, to stay in the game. Uh, and then we came out and really shot well. Um, uh, it's going to be one of those aspects that it's all about matchups. And uh, you hear that a lot when it comes to postseason play. Some teams just play against other teams very well. Even if that team is first in the conference, the matchups just uh, work out. Here's the tough part about Graceland. Um, we do not match up very well with Graceland. They're big. They're huge. They always will play two uh, power forward centers at all times. And so we don't have any going into that game. Now, that works on both ways. They have to guard us, we have to guard them, but it's not an, a classic matchup. Uh, one system is going to win out over the other. We just hope that we can get the game more in our style of play. Uh, but there's other teams that we just match up very well, and I think, for example, a Benedictine, who has been a top, at one time a top 10 team, now a top 20 team, uh, they've had a hard time matching up with us. And even though they're, I still think, the best team in the conference, it's just a very good matchup for us. So um, that's what it's really going to come down to. I just think Mitch just gives us more options, and we can go ahead and balance our matchups accordingly. Central Methodist travels to Lamoni, Iowa, to face Graceland University here on February 26th, this Thursday. Tip-off is at 730. Two games left on the schedule, Coach. Good luck. You betcha. Thank you.